Welcome to the November edition of the New Wine Club. This month we've decided to go for trailblazers. Last month you would have had three Riocas. Riocas are quite classical. It would have taken you on a journey from on Oak Rioca to Oak Rioca. This month it's absolutely the opposite. Stuff you'd never pick up on the shelf unless someone explained it to you or show, talked to you about it or showed you their hidden gem or their new favourite wine. Um, so trailblazers, what makes something a trailblazer? Uh, it's kind of a, a tag that, you know, you know what, what does it actually mean? For us, what a trailblazer is, or a trendsetter, um, is someone doing something unusual, dynamic, amazing, um, I suppose off the beaten track. A lot of the times you find that the wine world is so regulated and regimented that you you can't really experiment because then you kind of get, you know, thrown off the sides and well, you know, you can't call your wine Rioja because it's not this or it's not that. Um, so what we've done is we've captured three wines that are just cool, funky, um, made by winemakers who are one of a kind really for their region. So the first wine we have, it's a sparkling wine from Sicily. Um, so this was the first sparkling wine from Sicily that I had ever tried. And I just thought it was amazing when we tried it. It's called a pet nat, and um, now it's sort of as a pet nat, I think they're being a bit loose with the term. So it's a sparkling wine made from the grape Cattaratto. We did actually the Cattaratto grape, I think it was maybe in um, August. So it's a local grape from Sicily. And they make it into a still wine, and then they put it into the bottle, and they add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of yeast, and they get the ferment going, but it's semi-sparkling. You can see it's sealed with this, a crown cap, um, not in like a champagne cork with the mushroom and the foil and the coil and all those bits. Um, so it's semi-sparkling, which means it gets the single tax. Um, there's double, double tax on fully sparkling wines, single tax on semi-sparkling wines. Um, so what does it taste like? You can see that it's the colour of apple juice, or cloudy. You can see that there's, um, and I always get these messages saying, is it meant to have that weird gunky stuff at the end? Yes, it's because it's unfiltered, unfined, um, it's as natural as it comes um, and the little bit of colour comes from the little bit of skin contact. What does it taste like? Um, for me it's quite tropical, it's super juicy and um, so you've got kind of pineapples and grapefruits um, but because it's, an, it's um, there's also low sulphur in it, the way it's made it's a bit yeasty so it's kind of dry and savoury with this beautiful big tropical punch um, produced by a guy called Marco, his surname has F's, Z's and L's in it, so I can't pronounce it. I'm not even going to try. Um, but Porta del um, Vento, they farm organically, so no chemicals in the vineyard. Biodynamically, so they take um, a biodiverse polyculture approach to the vineyards. It's organic and it's vegan friendly. So it's all singing, all dancing, low in alcohol and low in sugar. I'm sure you have your own bottle there. 12.5% um, is the alcohol content in that. It's just a beautiful glass of wine. For me, it's classic breakfast wine or brunch wine as well. Eat fun, easy to drink, light and refreshing. Um, these guys are down by Palermo, if you've been to Sicily. They're 600 metres above sea level, so it's slightly higher up. And that just means it gets cooler temperatures because I know when you think of Sicily, you think of the blue skies and the blue sea and the heat. And it's a little bit cooler where these wines are made, which means that you get that beautiful acidity. It's super unusual. You're going to find this hardly nowhere to be honest. Um, we were delighted to put it on the list. We had another pet nut at the start of the year and basically it was sold out for the whole year by June. So we've managed to get something that we think is equally delicious. So I hope you enjoy this. It's called Vora or Voria and the producer Porta del Vento. Porta del Vento. Um, so that's the, the chap in Sicily and there's no one else doing anything like this in Sicily. It is super cool and he does a few other different sparkling ones but we thought this one was the best. So enjoy. The second wine in our wine club this month is this really quirky wine from Sontana. So Sontana is located, you're kind of going up to San Sebastian. So the bottom part of the Pyrenees, I hope my geography is correct here. Anyway, you're definitely in that Northern Spain um, going close into France to be honest, that top corner. Um, so there's mountains, it's cold, it's, it's moderately warm. It's nothing like when you get as far as Seville or any further south. There's a really interesting story behind this wine. Um, so it's produced by a sherry producer called Barbadillo. And sherry is produced in the most southern part of Spain, in Jerez, 
um, and that's spelled J-E-R-E-Z, so Jerez, near Cadiz. So right down the bottom, near Seville, really, really hot. And Barbadillo, they're a huge sherry producer. Um, and there's a bar in Jerez that all the trendy people go to drink wine, where all the trendy people, and that doesn't just mean, like, not the wine trendy, but um, not, it's, it's where the wine, trendy winemakers go, um, where kind of the, the trends are set. And the Barbadillo owners approached the owner of the wine bar because he stopped all the cool wine and said, will you find us something cool? Because Sherry kind of, you know, nearly broke free of the shackles of being an old lady drink. Um, but it kind of didn't. No one really drinks it unless you're on holidays, no matter what anyone tells you. Um, and so they sent the owner of the wine bar off on his travels. He ended up in Samantano, so as far north as he's going to go, really. And... This particular um, producer, they specialise in the two local grapes. So Maristel is the red, and there's a white grape as well. And he's just made this wine and he brought it back, and it's, it's like one of the coolest things going. What's really interesting about it is it's really black. It's like the colour of a Malbec, but it's as light as a Pinot Noir. So it's kind of like an oxymoron. Is that what an oxymoron is? Maybe. Um, anyway, um, Tony's behind me here, so I'm half having a conversation with him and half having a conversation with you guys. Uh, so, so anyway, it's a really interesting wine because um, although it's dark in colour, it's light in body, it's super juicy, it's unoaked. Um, when I tried it, which was I think maybe six or seven weeks ago, I thought it was the funnest wine I've tried all year. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Now, the good news is that it's in your box. The bad news is that you guys have the last of it because we assumed that we'd get it until the end of the year and when we went to get it from the supplier he was like yeah i've got 24 left so that's the job done so um it's a lovely wine i really hope you enjoy it if it comes back in we'll definitely put some more up online um but it's just it's something really fun and something really unusual a lot of the times with pinot noir if you like pinot you kind of don't know what else to look for because you know if you like a, a malbec you might like a shiraz but pinot noir kind of exists in its own um, bracket Fleury and Beaujolais are other similar ones to that. Um, so there you go. So the producer is um, Bodega Pyrenees, I think, and the particular wine they've called it Principo, and the grape is Maristel. So I hope you enjoy that. And the last wine is another bottle of red, and it's it's I suppose soft and plummy and round, um, by a producer called La Commercial, and this is in Valencia. So you're kind of going pretty far away from, from Samantano. You're going down the coast, Valencia is more than halfway down the coast, so it's much, much hotter. And um, the grapes here tend to be Garnacha, Garnacha, which is the same grape that's in, in Rome, in the Chardonnay de Pape. And they have another really quirky grape here called Bobal. And you see it in really tiny quantities produced by, um, in Argentina sometimes, um, and maybe sometimes in um, Galicia. And they have some here and what these guys do is really interesting again they're organic they're vegan they're natural and um, all singing and all dancing and um, they met at a producer called Sela Diver, who are one of the champions of making wine in these clay eggs so rather than doing wine in stainless steel which gives no flavor or making your wine in oak which gives that really oaky rich flavor when they're done in cement or clay eggs you kind of get this vibrancy of life without the kind of grippy tannins, without the oaky flavour. So it allows wines to mature and mellow out without using oak. So it's a really interesting way to add flavour and texture into the wine. Um, these guys, uh, it's just really, it's, it's interesting, it's fun, it's quite unusual to try a grape from Bobal. What a lot of the times you find in the produce in Valencia is the champion local grapes. So you have three really interesting wines, quite different. The two reds are quite good as a comparison because you have what would be a Cote de Rome comparing it to a Beaujolais. So in, in, if you're gonna do like a French comparison, something that's light compared to something that's kind of warm and, and meaty and quite plummy. So there you go.